Yesterday I did a video about how you can use Link in your games to make things just easier to use, query large amounts of data, find and filter, and run operations on whatever stuff you want. But there were a lot of great comments about some of the concerns, some of the issues that come up when you're using Link, specifically around allocations and how to refactor and optimize that stuff away. So today I wanna to show you how you can avoid a problem that most game developers run into along the way, especially if you're building anything that targets non-PC games games and show you how to use the profiler to find these problems, fix them, and watch out for an issue that you're going to see kind of pop up as you're doing these fixes. A lot of the time you fix things and they're not quite fixed. So let's start with a quick example. Here I've got two players in a multiplayer game, just part of my multiplayer mastery course, and an NPC in the middle that I can click on, damage, and all that stuff. But I want this NPC to be able to find the nearest player. So I've written a simple script that I've added to that NPC. This is a very simplified, super simple NPC logic script that just finds the nearest other character doing a link call. And we're doing this every frame. Just imagine we've got a character that wants to constantly search for the nearest thing. This is the kind of thing where you want to avoid using link. And we're going to show you exactly why. So in the update method, I've got this nearest with link getting assigned to the find nearest with link result, which is right here. And you'll see that on line 16, first thing we do is just get the local character just so that we're not calling get component a bunch of times and skewing our data here. Then we find the nearest other by looking at all of our characters. This is actually, if we hit F12 on it, a wrapper to the values of a dictionary of server characters. And then we order them by the distance so that we get the closest one at the beginning and then return the first one that's not the local one. Let's go see what this looks like in the profiler. So here's our profiler window with it running. And if I just click anywhere, I should be able to click and it'll pause my game and it's gonna show me all of the data for that specific frame. Now I can scrub back and forth through frames, but all of the frames are gonna be about the same. I've already got this sorted down here on the bottom. If you don't see your hierarchy, it doesn't look right. Make sure first that you've clicked on CPU usage, not rendering memory or something else. They all have a different view. And then up here, click on GC alloc and make it so that the largest value is at the top. You scroll up to the top with everything collapsed. You should see something that looks kind of like this with everything in player loop and then you can expand it out. Now below that I see I've got a script run update behavior or script run behavior update. There we go, expand that out. And that's allocating 2.1 kilobytes every single frame. If I scroll through, that's every frame it's allocating and it's allocating quite a bit. Now that might not seem like a lot, but if it's every frame, we run 100 frames a second, you can see how this starts to add up really, really fast. So we've got our behavior update underneath that. That's it running our own scripts or some scripts. It doesn't have to necessarily be ours. It could be part of a package or a library. Expand that out more and you see that NPC logic update is 2.1 and then down below it, there's actually a unity transport update this part if you're worried about it don't worry you can ignore it it's actually just a debugging thing for the networking library what we actually care about is here in the npc logic update so expand that out again and you see that the first thing here and this is what catches i'd say more developers than anything is the debug log. If you have debug logs in there, they do allocate memory. Now you can strip them out when you do a release build and it's not a development build. It's not always an issue, but it's something that's going to be allocating more than anything is these debug log entries. So I can easily remove that out. That's that's a no-brainer. Let's go on though to the next thing. The next part is this NPC logic, find nearest with link. If I expand it out, you see that first or default is allocating 80 bytes. The order by is allocating 56 bytes. And then down here, there's a string concat, which is probably part of the, uh, the debug log. So right here, we're getting 424 bytes. Oh, no, we've yeah, we're getting quite a bit of allocation there. So we want to remove that. We want to make it so that we are not allocating that much every single frame. Of course, the deleting the debug log is the, the easy first step. So if we go in here and just comment that out, we're going to get rid of most of our allocations. But if I want to do something a little bit faster, instead of using, or not faster, but less allocating, what I can do is not use the link method, but instead use a loop. So let's change this to do find nearest with loop and see what that does. That's going to grab the local character just like before, just caching it. We should probably save this off really 
realistically, but not a part of the test right here. Then we figure out it or assign a newest nearest character, make that null, and then figure out the max distance and have that be the max value. Figure out our current position just so that it's cached and just super optimizing it there. And then looping through all of the characters, figuring out the distance to each character. And if that character is the nearest, then we return that. Let's see how that works and if it solves all of the allocation problems. So I'll press play. I'll sign back in my character. There we go. And then let's go take a look at our profiler. So I check out my profiler and I'll go grab another frame. It looks already like things are a little bit lower. But if I go grab a random frame, I can see that I've got NPC logic here is now allocating 40 bytes. Well, that's a whole lot better than the, whatever it was, 2.1K. Let's expand it out a little bit more. If I go into find nearest, you see that it's this value collection systems collection i enumerable t value get enumerator. So we removed the link statement, but we're still getting allocations. And this is one of the things that is super important to call out. Just because you remove the link statement doesn't mean that you've actually removed all of the allocations. There's one more thing going on here that's causing allocations. It's not always just link. And that's the get enumerator. And that's because if we look at all characters, again, it's wrapping the values of this dictionary. So it's just an I enumerator. An alternative way to do this that would speed things up, either, not, I keep saying speed things up, but remove those allocations completely, is to just cache these characters into a list. So in Instead of just having them in this dictionary, I also put them into this list. And then we have a new version, find nearest cached, which just looks at that list. And well, let's see, we should expect to see though that it finds them and does not actually allocate anything at all. So find nearest cached. And we'll go press play one more time. We'll get back in. Let's just go grab that helmet and drop it back on the ground and hop back to our profiler. There we go. Go grab a random frame. And now we can see that we're allocating zero. So this was what I wanted to cover. Again, this transport part, don't worry. It's just part of the the debug thing, that's not something I'm going to worry about optimizing out. It's one of the tools that's doing it. But in general, you should definitely be looking at the profiler and scanning through looking for allocations. Now, they're not always going to be every frame. Sometimes you're going to have things that just allocate every you know second or whatever timing you've got them on. But you should always be looking at this sorting by allocations and seeing what you can remove. Don't remove things right away. Don't remove things that are small and spiky. Like I said in the past video, if you're doing link queries and you're doing it for initialization or searching or filtering or things that aren't happening often, don't worry too much about the allocations. It's when you're in the hot path, when you're doing things that are happening every frame or on a regular cycle very often in allocating memory, you have to start paying a lot more attention to it. It's always great to just profile though, sort by allocations and see what you can remove. Just make sure that you profile afterwards and make sure that it's still good and works. Now, if you have any questions or thoughts about this, please drop them in the comments. If you like these profiling videos and have some deeper things that you want to like, learn more about, um, please let me know there as well. And if there's anything I missed, of course, don't forget to drop those in the comments too. There've been some really good comments lately on some of the things that um, I haven't called out yet. And I think that they're great. It helps me and it helps everybody else. Also, if you're interested in multiplayer development, don't forget to check out the multiplayer mastery course. It's uh, linked down in the description. We go into depth on building peer-to-peer -peer multiplayer games with a race car game. That's all done. And a dedicated server is, is extraction game. I can never say the word right. Extraction game. Run around, kill each other, kill NPCs, pick up loot, you know, grab the loot, get your character back out, save, and then go back into another world and keep trying to get better, get more experience and all that stuff. Well, that's what you're going to learn how to build. And then you can expand and change it to whatever you want, you know, go RPG style, sci-fi, or, you know, change it to our, whatever style and theme you want. You will learn the skills for building all the multiplayer stuff. Anyway, I'm going to shut up now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.